Holy Spirit. In our Lenten reflections on the stations of the cross, today we focus on the seventh and the eighth station. Jesus falls the second time, and Jesus comforts the women of Jerusalem. As Jesus is barely able to carry his cross, stumbling for the second time, approaching the place of his crucifixion, we see crowds following him, beating their breasts and wailing for him. Jesus turns to them and offers the most unusual words of comfort. Daughters of Jerusalem, he says, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, blessed are the barren and the wounds that never bore and the breast that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. These words don't sound comforting at all. A comforting response in our understanding would involve words like, don't worry, everything will be all right. Except deep down, the women of Jerusalem know that it won't. They have seen too much pain, violence, and hatred. Even when their great king and prophet with even when they greet their king and prophet with palm branches and shouts of Hosanna, they can probably anticipate his response. If you, even you, had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Indeed, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up ramparts around you and surround you and hurl you in on every side. They will crush you to the ground, you and your children within you and they will not leave within you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God. Yes, they probably could anticipate Jesus's response and be consoled by it, for these were the words of all the prophets who wept for Jerusalem and for its children. All the prophets who offer, offered hope and reassurance to an oppressed people throughout its history did so not by optimistic empty words, it will be all right, but by pointing out to the violent, sinful reality that upsets God and that God wants to fix out of love for his children. Others dress the wounds of God's people as if they were nothing, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. But here is Jesus, the Prince of Peace, offering real comfort to the women of Jerusalem and to all of us on the Calvary. So how does this comfort work? How can the words they will begin to say to the mountains fall on us be comforting? Well, even from our common sense and life experience, we know that saying it will be all right does not always help. And more often than not, it actually leads to a person's sense of being alone in their suffering. On the contrary, it is by responding to a mother who lost her child in war, blessed is the womb that never bore and the breast that never nursed or to an elderly woman whose home was where she spent her whole life was destroyed by a bomb, may the mountains fall down on us. It is with these words that we can actually offer comfort and reassurance that their pain is real, that they are not alone, but are seen and held close by someone who cares and who understands. Many cultures have a popular tradition of public wailing and mourning as a practice of care, comfort, and solidarity with those who are suffering. From a psychological perspective too, we can also add an insight on strategic pessimism as a defense mechanism of our psyche in situations of great anxiety. By envisaging worst case scenarios and playing them out, we can be better prepared and more emotionally stable when, the, when these things actually do happen and relieved when things turn out better than we thought. In fact, when Jesus offers apocalyptic images of the destruction of Jerusalem at the Mount of Olives just a few days before the encounter with the women of Jerusalem, he does so along with clear instructions to his disciples on how to be prepared. He says, Woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing infants in those days, for there will be great distress on the earth and wrath against this people. But he also says, Now, when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then, of course, there is the comfort of Scripture and especially of the prophets' voices that were surely familiar to the weeping, weeping women. 
The tears over the fate of Jerusalem and its people are definitely not foreign to them. These are the tears of God himself, who loved us into existence, and who does not want the mountains to fall on us and the hills to cover us with dust. The women of Jerusalem know of God's mercy and of love that will stand even if the mountains did fall and the hills turn to dust. The apocalyptic images that the prophets offer as a warning and a call to repentance are highlighted by the words of comfort. Comfort, comfort my people, says our God, with gentle words, tender and kind. Assure Jerusalem, this chosen city from long ago, that her battles are over, the terror, the bloodshed, the horror of my punishing work is done. And yet there is something deeper to Jesus' comforting the women of Jerusalem than we can take out of our knowledge of psychology or common sense or prophets' voices. And it has to do with Jesus' person, of him being the fulfillment of all prophecies. And it has to do with the place from which he speaks. This son of man, who has just fallen the second time under the weight of the cross, and will fall again, and will be crucified, and dead, and buried, and will descend into hell, he knows what he is talking about. It is not the empty words of comfort from an outside observer, but the words coming from God who took flesh and chose to dwell among us, chose to share in our suffering and to die for us so that death would never have the final word. The ultimate comfort is the cross. In the words of St. Paul, our comfort abounds through Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ.